Welcome to One on One on God 101. I'm your host, Julie Chen Moonvez. Our guest today is Big Brother 11 winner, Jordan Lloyd. Now Jordan Lloyd Schroeder. <laughs> Hi, Jordan. Hey, Julie. Thank you for having me. Thank you for saying yes. Now, the reason your name is actually Jordan Schroeder now is because the season you won Big Brother 11, you went in as strangers, you and Jeff Schroeder. Fast forward, you came out, started dating, husband and wife now, two boys into the marriage. Oh, I know. I, going into Big Brother, never thought I would come out of there with a husband. <laughs> All right, we're going to get to a lot because we have a lot of catching up to do. But first, God. Mm -hmm. I ask everyone the same first question, which is, did you grow up with God and faith in your life? Oh, yes. Uh, I grew up going to a non-denominational church. Uh, it's actually a funny story. I took Jeff um, after we got off Big Brother. I took him to uh, my church and he is Catholic. So he is not used to loud, like my pastor stomps on his feet. The people are getting up like, go pastor, tell the truth. And that is the type of church I love. And Jeff just was looking around like, what is going on <laughs> over here? And then I had never been to a Catholic church before. So Christmas time, I always would go with his family to church and it's just peace be with you up, down, up, down. I'm like, oh, there's a lot of like sitting and getting up. But uh, yes, I grew up in church went, um, I mean, since I can remember my mom raised us in church, our kids now they go to Christian school. Um, it's very important to me that you have faith. Your boys are now ages six and four. Correct. Yeah. You, uh, this non-denominational church that you grew up in was in North Carolina. It was yes. What part? A Charlotte. Oh, so no. I watched, uh, Alyssa's interview and she was talking about uh, Stephen Furtick, the pastor at Elevation Church. So everything she was saying, I was like, oh my gosh, it's so funny because Rachel and Alyssa didn't grow up too far from where I grew up. And um, all the girls I worked with went to Elevation Church. And one of the girls I work with, her husband, I think, is um, training to be a pastor at one of the Elevation campuses. There are no such coincidence is not, there is no it's such thing as a world. Yeah. And then I didn't know any of that until after, after I got off big brother, I remember being out in Charlotte and Rachel's sorority sisters would stop me and be like, I was her sorority sister at app state. And then you want to hear something else crazy. My sister's best friend, her cousin, um, I think was roommates with Rachel. Wait a minute. And we have to remind everyone now, Rachel Riley mm -hmm. was in season 11. No, season 13. Oh, that's when you met her. Okay. Yes. So, all right. You have to help jog my big yeah. brother. I mean, it was a long time ago. So you win big brother 11 mm -hmm. season 13, you and Jeff come back and play again. Mm -hmm. But Rachel Riley was a newbie. Was she? No. No, she was. She was on the season before, right? And she then came in because she won season thirteen. Yes, that was the season. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now this is all coming back to me mm -hmm. because people have to understand we're about to embark on our twenty fifth twenty fifth season. So oh, there's yeah. a lot. Okay, so this is a small world, and it. I feel like it shows we're all God's children. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We, you know, we think we have more, we actually have more that unites us than separates us. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to tell you this story. So I had never watched Big Brother before. I was at the time I was working three jobs. I was 22. I'm 36 now. So I was 22. I was just a little baby. And um, this lady, Bonnie Clark, approached me and she was like, have you ever thought about doing reality TV shows? I kind of like blew it off. Right. And around that time, I was going through like the hardest time of my life. My parents got divorced and it was an ugly divorce. This I never dated really. But this one person who I 
thought I was in love with broke my heart with somebody else that I knew kind of like my world was crumbling. Right. And I was getting really depressed. And so I picked up all these extra jobs to keep my mind uh, busy. I felt like I always had to help my mom. I felt like I could never, never, uh, I always felt like I was held back from doing things. And, and kids my age were 22 in college having fun. And here I am working three jobs. And I remember at one point kind of questioning my faith because I was like, I've always been a good kid. Like I always... Uh, I've always gone to church. I've always done the right thing. And then Bonnie just randomly shows up at the restaurant I'm working at, watches me wait on my tables. And, you know, I didn't even show up for the casting call. I skipped because I was like, I don't care. I never, I've never wanted to be on a show before. And she called me back. And was like, I haven't found anybody. Will you please meet me? If she didn't pursue me and keep calling me, this would have never happened. And I feel like God uses people in different ways to help. So, like I said, I always felt held back. I feel like God put me on Big Brother for a reason so I could help my mom and then I could go on with my life. And since I've done that, I've. I bought her a house when I won. I paid it off for her so she wouldn't have any worries. And I get blessed in other ways. So I, you know, I had my heart broken, but I met Jeff and I have healthy boys. I'm getting chills now, like talking about it and things. It's just how it happened. And, you know, I, I wasn't going on Big Brother to look for somebody. I didn't even know what I was doing. I just felt like I wasn't doing anything with my life. So I was like, well, I'll just go on this show. And then ends up, I win this money. And, you know, I called my sister. I was like, what do you owe on your car? And paid it off. And with that money, I, d- I did good with it. And I felt like that's what God wanted me to do. He wanted me to help my mom, help my sister, I help my brother. And then the rest I put away and I, I didn't blow it. And another thing, Julie, sorry, I'm talking too much. I just know we have a short amount of time. My grandpa is the best advice. My grandpa is a huge Christian. He knows the Bible from front to back. If I have any questions about God, he is the one I call. And you'd ask him a question and he knows it. And he writes letters, old school, and he dates them. And he wrote me a letter and he was like, don't forget your faith in God. Uh, Remember that God used you to help your mother. And remember, you are not rich. You have cushion. Don't go and buy a rich man's car because you are not rich. And he, oh, and then he said too, he goes, everybody thought me and Jeff weren't going to work out. And my, even my family and my grandpa, he said, if it doesn't work out in a relationship with Jeff, just know you made a lifelong best friend. And that was just the best advice, just about faith in God kind of keeping you grounded because when you're 22 and you get that, no, it's not. I mean, now it's not that much after taxes and everything, but still you think, Oh, I could buy this. And my grandpa's like, no. And I ended up taking care of my family and I kept everything the same. I kept my same car from high school till I was like 26 until it wasn't, it it was funny. People would always see me and want to know like back at home, like, Oh, what's she driving? And it was like, I stayed in my old Honda. So it was, it was a blessing. Being on Big Brother was such a blessing for me. And I thank God every single day for what he did because it led me to where I am now. Your grandpa's letter to me sounds like biblical wisdom. Yes. And you applied it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it paid off. Oh, it did. And uh, God blessed me with the house that I wanted here now in Colorado. And Julie, I have one more story I want to tell. This is the place to tell it. Keep going because you know what? We're going to make this a two-parter. So when we come up on 15 minutes, if we still have more stories to hear, we are telling it. There's like so much. I, I mean, I could go on forever talking about this with you. Okay. So this is now, this is fast forward. Jeff and I living in LA, 
I wasn't really, to be honest, I wasn't that happy in LA just because I thought when I moved there, everybody believed in God. And I'm sure it's hard for you being in the industry you are because in your industry, believing in God is, it's not very popular, right? Or it, it's, it's just, it, it's looked down upon. And then nowadays I feel like if you believe in God, you're categorized as maybe I shouldn't go there. You're categorized. They put you. Do you want me to go there? Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, what did you just say? I stepped on you. What did you say? No, you're just, you're, they put a label on you. That's what I mean. Yes. And I think the label, they say like, oh, she's a Jesus freak. Mm-hmm. Hi, everyone. This is part two of my continuing conversation with Big Brother season 11 winner, Jordan, who also played in season 13, met her future slash now husband, Jeff, in the Big Brother house. They started off as strangers. Now they're married with two boys, ages four and six. Where we left off, Jordan, was you were describing for everyone, your new mom, you're living in LA, you were raised in Charlotte, North Carolina. You come to LA and you're surprised to see that um, not everybody uh, puts God in first place no. <laughs> in LA. And uh, you were received with um, some unkind words by a motorist mm -hmm. uh, who was who decided to criticize um, you taking your newborn out for a walk. He acts like I was walking in the middle of the street. I stayed the closest I could to the mailboxes. And, but that's how people are out there or they're tough in their cars and always blowing the horns. And it's just like, and I always thought it was so weird. I would go to like Bel, El, Bel Air church with my friend and it was, it, I, I was surprised. It's not busy. It's at all. <laughs> I'm like, where are all the people? Well, I think we, you just nailed it, right? You know, your experience in LA has not been positive with, you weren't surrounded by people who demonstrate having Jesus in their life. And you went to church in Bel Air when you lived here and you said it was rather empty. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So it kind of adds up a little, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't mean, I would pray to God all the time just to, I knew, I, I knew LA was temporary and I'm going to get into this other story because this like kind of gives me chills too. Um, it was temporary. And I knew when Lawson was born, I was like, I just don't want to, this isn't me. It's other people. It is for them. But I was like, I don't want to raise my kid here. I want my kid to go to a Christian school. I want my kid, um, our babysitter is hosting a vacation Bible school. She's 17 years old. Like she's so mature for her age. And when we moved to Denver, I knew nothing about Denver. And you find people that are more like you. So I've met so many friends and so many people that we talk about God. We go out to uh, breakfast and we talk about God or we talk about things. You have to have God in your life because life is not perfect. And this world too. The reason why this world is the way it is, is because they want to take God out of everything. They want to take God out of um, schools. They want to take God out. I mean, just out of everything. It's like, it's like he's the enemy and really he's what everyone needs. Amen. Sister Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's like, God is a gentleman. You keep asking him to leave. He'll leave. Trust me. When, it's our last breath on earth. Trust me, you do not want to go to a godless place. You don't. Jeff thinks I'm crazy because I'm like, Jeff, we're living in the last days. And he's he's like, stop, Jordan. And well, I will go on and on about it. <laughs> well, nobody knows, but I feel you because with the weather system, it does, yes. matters, it does feel like... Armageddon. I can't read that stuff. I cannot read revelations because I get nervous. I cannot read left behind books because then I get freaked out. Um, okay. But let me tell you this story. So I'm not like uh, dragging everything. Cause I did get a little off topic and I do that a lot. No, you haven't. You're okay. totally, I love it. Keep going. Okay. This is why, this is why you won big brother. Your heart. <laughs> Go ahead. 
So we, okay, we have Lawson. Uh, like I said, I had postpartum. Jeff didn't tell me. He had got dropped by both his agents. This is in LA. Then <clears throat> remember he used to do uh, CBS.com, like the Big Brother after show. They didn't ask him back. They like cut that off. So everything that he had, it, everything was just falling apart. And it was kind of, it was the most stressed and depressed I've ever seen him because he came back to LA a second time because he felt like a loser the first time because he never got anywhere. When he got on Big Brother, it helped push. It, it helped him a little bit. Well, we're sitting, he's like really down. And I had bought this actually in LA. It's a prayer box. Okay. And it's got these tiny little papers in it and a little pencil. And I got it out and I, and it's all dusty now. I'll tell you why. I told Jeff, I said, right on there, what you want, what are you praying for? What is something you want to happen? I was like, because right now your world's crumbling. I said, but God test your faith right now. This is why this is what's going on. He's going to see what you do. You, so a lot of people turn away from God, but you need God. So he wrote it down and I wrote mine. And I told him, I said, we're going to put it in this box and we are not going to open it. And I have not opened this in seven years. I put it up high so it doesn't um, close. And a week later, Jeff gets a call that he was going to be one of the hosts on Daily Blast Live and that we had um, a week to pack and move to Denver, Colorado. So my prayer was that I wanted to move. I wanted to be somewhere with, where I felt comfortable with loss. And that's really what I cared about was family. Jeff's was that he wanted, all he wanted to do was be a host. He wanted to get a job. He's like, I worked so hard for this. And we both put it in here and we both, I swear to you, got our prayer. And like I said, it's all dusty and I won't open it because I feel like I'm like, everything's going good right now. And I know there's going to be some, we're going to go through something again and it's going to be a decline, but it just, I always remind Jeff, and two on his show, they talk about hard topics. And nowadays, everybody wants to cancel you for anything. Um, it's gotten out of control. And so Jeff will come home and I can tell he's stressed. And I feel like I'm a good person for him because I'm like, if you're passionate about what you're talking about, you say it and you speak what is right. You s don't give the social media answer or what all the other TV LA people, those answers. I go, people want to hear the truth. And I go, you have that platform now. I go, they, they're not a hundred percent national, but I think they're in like 95 cities. So I go, you are speaking to 95 cities, millions of people. And that is why I told him, the Balenciaga thing went viral that he went on a rant about. I said that was because no one on TV was talking about that. You felt passionate about it because we have two young boys. And I was like, speak up for this people who are the silent people that want to hear somebody like that on TV. So. <laughs> no, absolutely. So <laughs> Daily Blast Live is yes. a talk show that. John, John, I'm looking at a text from my producer, John, saying we need to wrap up. Um, let me just say this, Jordan, you keep being, putting God in first place yes. and God bless you. I thank you for your time. I say oh, God. I thank you so much for having me. And Julie, you're the best. You are just so gracious. You're so kind. You're so sweet and keep doing what you're doing. When I saw a while ago, when you started this, you're doing good things and keep doing it. And um, also too, I'm going to buy some of your swag. I promise. I'm not just saying that. Oh, I'm sending something. <laughs> shush, shush. I'm sending something. But I do have to deliver on the tease. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. In the final minute, you okay. told your grandma when you went into Big Brother, I'm not going to go on national television and kiss somebody that I just met. And you held to that. Oh, yeah. And that's why 
well, that's not why, but you held to that. You're a woman of your word. And then when cameras weren't around in the privacy of your own space with Jeff, you started dating and yes. now you're married. And with yes. Two boys. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's been 14, going on 14 years. I know. And your son is 14, right? My son is 13 and a half. So okay, when you, so he's <laughs> when okay. you were your brother, he was nine days away from coming into this world. May, may I put you on the spot and ask you to end this episode in prayer for the world? Oh, yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Please just watch over this country. Please watch over Julie and her show. Please let other people who are hurting or need you see this and follow Julie's path and believe in God. And please just watch over all of us. Please let everybody be kind. Please just thank you for all you have done for us. And you are a wonderful God. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to sign off of this episode the way I've been signing off of Big Brother since the pandemic started. Love one another. Love God. I'm actually going to say God on this show because I can. Love God first. Love one another right behind that. Jordan Schroeder, thank you so much. I yes. love you. Yes. Thank you. If you ever come to Denver, we're, get coffee and we'll talk hours. <laughs> yes, we will.